show us your glory.
Nervous today. Nervous in the sense that I have a reverential fear for, for the Lord. You got a word for us and it's exciting. Um, I don't know the reason why you came to church. Uh, God knows. I hope you're really excited. You came with a great spiritual expectation that God will do a mighty work in your life. I really do pray that that's the only reason why you come, so that we can have fellowship, because there has been a change in the churches. We've lost something in the church. We lost the glory of God in the church. We lost the grandeur and the majesty of Jesus in the church. We lost the Ikabo. We lost the presence of God. I mean the true presence of God. And I believe that God is talking to us and he's saying something. Because if you only know and, the, and experience the presence of God, you will not be sitting like a statue. You won't. Your heart will be fired up in such a way that you want to praise him, that you want to release um, the innermost of you praising him regardless of who is beside you, in front of you, behind you, just you and the Lord. We just begin to focus on him and love his word. You begin to love your neighbor. You begin to love yourself. You begin to love God so much so that you are willing to sacrifice everything, even your own life, just so you can share that precious life of God in someone else's life. And and, and, and that is missing. And you know, in the New Testament, we see the first church going to and fro, winning souls to Jesus, bringing Jesus into the hearts of men and women and children, old people, young people. That's all they are preoccupied with doing. The, the modern, the postmodern church today is different. We are all considering our own ways and still building our own home, our own houses, our own fields. And the Lord say, consider my ways. You're building yours, but you have left mine in ruins. And we, we think that everything is going right because we have the right motivation, we have the right intention. But the presence of God is absent. You may praise all you want, but deep inside of you, you know that the presence of God is not there. You can have the greatest building of all and the nicest decoration, and you are there singing, but it only lasts for a short while. You can lift up your voice and sing to your uttermost, but it can only touch the ceiling of the building of the church you call. It can never open up and reach the heavenly throne of God. Have you experienced that? 
something died. Something died inside of you. Something died inside of the church. What do we need? We need revival. We need revival. Are you ready for the power of God to revive? And I believe that's the message that God wants to bring to us today. And I'm glad you're excited because that is an acceptation of the real and genuine you and me. There's something missing in our lives. We lost the joy, the excitement in praising God. We go through the motions and we think that's it and it is not. And God wants to say to us, let's get real. Experience the Ichabod. Experience the presence of God. It is the presence of God. The presence of God is the power of God, as you can see in the banner. And without it, you, you, you cannot be joyful and longing for the word of God. You know when you are revived, you have a right relationship with God. You are restored, you are transformed, you are changed. You look for the word of God. You're excited to hear the word of God. You, you, you come to church, what will the preacher preach today? What, what is the word of God for me? That's your reason. You come here, you want to hear. I want to praise God with the people here. Sing. I don't want to be a statue. The presence of God is not there if you just stand in like that. If you are doing something else, you might, you are, you're physically present here. Your mind is away. The presence of God is not there. We have lost something. And that is why the devil keeps attacking us, opposing us in every corner, in every turn. Not to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ, not to bring forth the glory of God, the presence of God in the lives of others, in our lives. If there is a revival today, I don't want to miss it. I will run to and experience that revival. But you cannot experience that if you're dead. Revival means to bring back to life, simply put. To bring back to life. I don't know which part of you died. Your worship? The hearing of the word of God? Your excitement in prayer? Is that, is that alive in you or dead? If it is dead, you need to be revived. You need to be restored. You need to be changed. And when God changes, restores, transforms you, what an exhilarating experience that is. Because you come into right alignment with God. That's the righteousness of God. Right standing with God. In your physical life, in your social life, in your spiritual life, every area of your life, right standing with God. Am I in right standing with you, God? No wonder you cannot praise and, and worship the Lord with all of your heart. Because you are off track by something. It can be a sexual sin. It can be covetousness. It can be slander. It can be gossip. It can be anything. And that is why I, I do believe that the need of the times today is revival. Look around us. Even the church has been transformed into a religious church. A traditional church. A secular church. Humanistic church. A political church. Every kind of thing except the this, this spiritual church which is the kingdom of God. And God is saying, stop. And a lot of churches are copying this. You, they have big edifices, you have big structures, and they have all these guys. Oh, well, all good, but you praise God. They do need the presence of God in those churches. I've traveled far and wide, and I do believe that in the churches that I went to, in, in the six continents that God sent me to observe and preach the gospel, I've seen this. Don't just have a conference for the sake of conference. Have a conference to bring the right relationship with God. Promoting ourselves. Promoting anything else but God. 
The name of the Lord should reverberate in this building, in your hearts. Everyone bringing their Bible when they come to church in reverence of Him. Looking. And God is sudden. And He says, I'll bring judgment. And the people say, no, you can't because you love us. No, I can't. This is the sovereignty of God. I've been preaching about the, 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 the power of God. God is in control. Everything else. Everything about Jesus. It has to bring back into, into the churches. Everybody wants survival, but for a moment. Just the things that they want to hear. And you will see in the scriptures as the spirit of God move with us today. And that it is true. God is calling you. The song said, are you ready? Are you ready for what? Are you ready for revival? Really? And when you hear the word revival, are you excited? Or are you pricked in the heart? Because you're not right with God. That's a good sign. That's a good beginning. Because it starts in the heart. Revival does not start outwardly. It starts within. Something happened within you. You lost it. You, you, you said yes to the enemy. With all his temptations. With all his tempting inducements. Because we are operating in the flesh. If you are operating in the flesh. Even if you cover yourself with nice clothes. Even you speak something that is in the Bible, but that's for the flesh. That's which you want to hear only. You are still a flesh. Galatians 6, 7. If you sow in the spirit, it gives life and life everlasting. If you sow in the flesh, you will reap corruption and rottenness. One day, you will be exposed and you will. The Bible says, to be sure, your sins will find you out. And God is mindful of everything. You've been running around. You've been hiding like Ahab, hiding. God found him. And the Lord is talking to us today. Lord, I pray that your word come forth, powered by your Holy Spirit, that we all have these listening ears. Allow us to see. Allow us to understand. Lord, revive us again. Lord, help us to restore that self-denial and humility in us too so we can admit and accept that we have sinned against you. Lord, King Josiah was a godly man, but when he met you, truly, the true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he confessed his sins and repented. Although people around him say he's a godly man. Lord God, we are all naked before you. Remove our masks. Let's not fake church anymore. And let's give you the glory, honor, and praises that you deserve. In Jesus' name, amen. Now even that introduction is very hard to say. Oh, God wants to talk to us. Loosen up a little bit, okay? But be focused. You see, let me read to you Psalms 27, 4 to 14. I have such a short time today. I'll try my best to behave. One thing I have desired of the Lord is starting in verse 4 of Psalms 27. And it's King David. One thing I have desired of the Lord that I... Uh, will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple for in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret place of his tabernacle he shall hide me he shall set me high upon a rock and now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me therefore I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. 
So he praises unto the Lord. And this king is so mighty and favored by God. A man after God's own heart. And yet, he had fared miserably in some areas of his life. And he knew it. And he was open to repent. He was open to say, Lord God, I have sinned. Lord God, please forgive me. I desire to dwell in your place. The king can say that. It is amazing when you come to terms with God. Don't hide. Don't deviate. Face it. Before a holy God and say, yes, Lord, I have sinned against you. Forgive me of my sexual sins. Forgive me for being a gambler. Forgive me for, for robbing you. Forgive me, O oh Lord God, for being not in your presence. Forgive me when I come to church and I only want what I want to hear. Forgive me when I'm not paying attention. Forgive me when I'm holding other stuff instead of you. Forgive me when I'm thinking something else when, I'm, when your word is being preached true. It's high time for the church to be revived and be alive. This is what the church is called for. And this king says, I, I want to dwell in your house. I want to be in your presence. When you have that Ichabod, the presence of God, it's different. But you, you have to turn and surrender to God. You cannot experience the presence of God. It will still all be flesh. Fake it. You smile. You grin. It will help you. Be real. Let's be real in our faith so that more people will come to inquire and know the Lord fully. And when you know that the presence of the Lord is in you, is with you. You fear nothing but the reverential fear of God. He can deliver you. Nothing is impossible for him to do. Every miracle is easy for him to do. That's his nature. The hardest thing, as I was preaching the other time, is for you to change your thinking, your mind, change your direction, change your way. That's in repentance. Change. Change. But the change that you have is not the change that James was saying. You hear the word and do it also. You hear the word, but don't do it. Well, that's amount to nothing. Faith without works is dead, still dead. You need to revive, to be revived. Revival is needed. Wouldn't it be nice and exciting when you are not acting like you're acting in 1947 still in your faith? It's 2022. What wouldn't change is the Jesus inside of you, but the way you come to Jesus, the way you serve him, the, the, way, the way you approach him, you have come to a higher degree, level, from one degree of his glory to the next, to the next. To the next. And that is why King David was that. He came into a place where he can meet with God and see and experience the awesomeness of God. He's changed from within. You, you know, when, when you have some uh, obligations, you have some work, responsibilities, how hard it is to think about God. You, you, we can give him one hour, three hours, 15 minutes to some, even two minutes only. And that is when they need something personal, not really seeking God because of his awesomeness. You're awesome in this place, mighty God. Now, you will never experience the awesomeness of God here if he's not awesome within. I tell you, you can do anything else. You can jump, you can clap, you can smile, you can raise your voice. But I'm sorry to say, if the Ikabu, the presence of God, is not there, you will not be able to experience the awesomeness of God as King David was experiencing. It's different. When you meet the real God, when you hear the word, you tremble. You tremble. Now, when you hear the word, you laugh. 
They don't tremble. Revival. So that is revive. Revival. To bring back to life. Bring back to life that which was dead, that which was lost. And so many a times in the history of the church, we can see in every century that something dies. And always God comes back to revive. To revive. And he opens himself up to people who are attentive to Christ, to God, to be revived. Those who can admit their own faults. Those who, who can admit that they are some, somehow dead somewhere within and needs to be revived. You, that needs to be brought back to life. You see, we need revival in the church because we have become traditionalist. We have become uh, worldly, secular, political, humanist, sectarian, anything but the kingdom of God, church. We need revival in the church because of so many dissensions, jealousy, evil rumors and gossips. Have you noticed that in, in the church? And that's us. There's a worldly spirit in the church. Not focusing on the kingdom of God. We sank down into a low and, and a backslidden state. We need to be revived. We need revival. Members of the church are conforming to the world. How? Have you seen all those beautiful women dressed in captivating, uh, you know, apparels in the church? Dress all you want. In fashion, parties, amusement, full of worldly novels. Not this. The church finding its members falling into gross and scandalous sins. We need revival in the church. How about us individually? Are we backslidden? If you are backslidden, you need revival. Are you having ingratitude in your heart? When was the last time you Thank the Lord. When was the last time you counted your blessings and not your miseries? You can count everything else, but you don't count the blessings God has favored you with. Ingratitude. So much. There is just so focusing I, me, myself. And the Lord said, what about me? We have so much food in here. But what about the food I give you? And the Lord Jesus came to this earth. His only food was the word of God. Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. When did you digest that in your spirit? 24 hours in a day. How much have you spent for that? In a day. You've been doing that for how many days? How many weeks? How many months? How many years? Neglecting Bible reading, Bible study, meditating on the Word of God. And the Bible tells us when you study the Word of God, meditate upon it day and night, you will have success and prosperity. But you, you want the motivational speakers to speak to you, and you follow all the instructions except the instructions of God. To study the Word of God and meditate Upon it day and night. Because it is the Lord who brings the blessings and abundance in your life. Not the world. Christians are full of unbelief. No moral absolutes. No uh, de uh, deroded moral fibers. Compromising faith. When it feels good, that's where they go. When it's a violent faith that we apply, they run away. Who? Oh, how many... People come to the prayer meeting. Do you have a violent faith? We are being opposed here and there by the enemy. And God is calling us to stand up. I will bring forth revival. 
but you will not be able to experience that revival that God will bring in his mighty power if you are not there, if your heart is not right. There are many betrayers. There are many Christians who are reflecting poor attitudes. Lack of concern for unbelievers. Lack of concern for brothers and sisters in the faith. Sin of hypocrisy. Sin of lying. Sin of cheating. Everything is there. Selfish. No self-neglect of, of, of self-denial or no self-denial at all. Worldly mindedness. You dream of things that are in the world, but you don't dream, dream of the things that are in the kingdom of God. Isn't that true? You, something was lost. When you got born again the first time, you're just so excited. You run to God in every turn, read the scriptures. It doesn't matter how long it is. You, you, you even want to, if you are working, you can sacrifice this for God because God is just so thrilled working in you and with you. But now, where is that now? Prideful, critical spirit, rubbing God, bad temper. We need revival. Something was lost, and it needs to be found. Something was dead. Now, now it needs to be revived. That's what revival is. And people are crying out for revival. They don't even know what revival means because they didn't want to change. If you want revival, it starts from within. It starts from the heart. You see, there is um, a word in Hosea, Hosea 10, verse 12. Sow for yourselves righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on you. Now, they, 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 they are the, the, the Jews, the people of God, were farmers. And that's why God is talking to them in a, in a language that they understand. Follow ground. Well, what happened to the ground that they were tilling? It was, it, it's becoming hard. It's not soft anymore. You cannot plant. You cannot sow. And, and he was talking to them. And he said to them, in the deeper meaning of that, your hearts have become hard, have hardened. Your heart is no longer tender that I can plant the seeds of life. How many in the church today have that? We may, he said, they have the appearance of godliness, but they lack the power thereof. Are you the living epistle? Is your heart ready to receive the Lord? When you hear from a pastor or a preacher or someone else, a hard thing, you run away, you change church, you move here, you move there because you don't want to hear it. But that's the truth. Now, there is a story in the scriptures Who's got a hard heart? And it is true. The, the Lord God Almighty exposed King Ahab. You see that in 2 Chronicles, in chapter 18. You will see that, that the king of Israel, um, Ahab, and the king of Judah, Jehoshaphat, they wanted to go to a mount and um, conquer the people there. And so, what happened in there is that, you know, King Ahab has got 400 plus prophets. In those days, and even at these times, you know, God has got emissaries, he's got mouthpieces. You hear from the men of God. And so he called his prophet and said, tell me if we're going to win this war or not. Can we conquer it? And those who are loyal to Ahab, of course, the prophets, supposed to be hearing from God. They want to please their master, what he wants to hear. And that's what it is in these 400 prophets and all that. They, 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 they are just trained to please their master, Ahab, but not God who brought them there. And they said, yeah, you will be able to conquer this, this mountain. You will win the war. And Jehoshaphat said, is there any other prophet in the land who hear from God? And they, and they said, yes, there's, there's one more who's not here. Micaiah. Micaiah is the prophet of God. And he says what the Lord says, regardless of what it is. And so they called him. Long story short, the prophet who is missing came forth and he said to the king, well, jokingly, you will win the war and all that. 
Even before they called him, the king, king Ahab said, don't call him. He never say anything good to me. He always speak evil of me. And no wonder he doesn't like that. He never called him, but Jehoshaphat said, call him. Okay, let's do. And, and this prophet has got a sense of humor and said to King Ahab, oh, well, you were going to win. Oh, come on. Please tell the truth according to what God's, your God says. And he told the truth. Don't go there because when you go there, you're going to die. He, King Ahab didn't believe that. So what he did, instead of believing what the prophet said, he disguised himself into like one of the soldiers. Not, not with his robe. Lo and behold, somebody from the enemies come, sh shoot an arrow into the air, and hit his chariot, and he got wounded. And the sad thing is that he died. The prophet said, don't go there, you're going to die. And many a times, when someone prophesies to us, don't do this and don't do that, I pray that prophets will come alive and tell you the sad truth. When, last Sunday when we had the word of prophecy here, I know that and I can sense that a birthing of revival is in this house. So get serious with your relationship with God and how we conduct ourselves before the presence of God here. Because if you don't, like King Ahab, you're going to die. You won't be revived. You remain dead. It's a serious thing, but it is God talking now. And that is why sin is so rampant all across the earth. You can notice that. And God is doing a mighty work. If you can see, if you can know, if you can understand what God is doing, if I were you, I get excited. I do. I'm going to go back reading the word of God. I'm going to listen to preaching that are from the word of God, empowered by the spirit of God. I don't want to hear only the things that I want to hear, like King Ahab. You have to start from your heart, not outside. If you want revival, change from within. Allow, you, allow God to change you, and you can change only if you repent. Repentance is the key. True repentance. Lord, I'm sorry. I didn't cut it according to the way you wanted it. Forgive me for I'm so weak and I'm so fragile. Forgive me for being a coward. God, I need you to restore my life. Bring me back again. Because in those times that you went to battle, in those times that you experienced trouble, and if you stand firm and immovable and trust God, it will be those times and, and things and experience that you have gone through that will make you strong in the Lord, knowing that God is with you, knowing that the presence of God is all over you. And the people around you will see it. There's no mistaking that it is God is working in your life. And they will give glory to him and to him alone. That is what is needed in the churches today. That is what is lost in the church today. As long as there are willing vessels that God, whom God can use, he will revive the church again. And also, after a revival, a great spiritual awakening in the land. For we have now, through hearts that are circumcised by the Spirit, of God to bring back the glory of God. I do believe that with all of my heart. And I'm still believing. Just of late. My crusade director, when we were still doing crusades way back in 2000, big crusades in the Philippines. And I'll cut the long story short. Now, he's now in Spain. And um, in the seven years that he stayed in Spain, he had planted about 26, 27 churches across Europe. And there's one that's not in, there's two that's not in Europe anymore. One he planted in Dubai, and the latest plant was in Israel. He just rang me up four days ago. 
so for this Sunday when we went to dinner, Hannah. I couldn't move his expecting goal. The man of God who loves God so much. And uh, he was saying that we are going to Israel. What is the word of the Lord? I said the word of the Lord is it's not to celebrate your not merely to celebrate your 10 year anniversary. And the spirit came and said to him, use that to glorify and honor the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and bless the people of God. You will not go there just to celebrate your anniversary. I said to him, reverend, brother, disciple, friend, look, it is God who is needed in Israel to be lifted up. And he brings you from Europe to Israel for that reason. You better. There is a word in season and out of season. Let us do what is what matters to God and not what is important only to our seeing, to our understanding, to our liking. Something that glorifies God because Jesus is coming back. What would you rather do? Play church? Do the usual thing? It's not that time anymore. It's time for unwavering faith to come back to this church again. This church. Amen? Praise God. Yeah, give him glory and praise. Praise God. So, let your heart be tender. Break those fallow ground. If you're still in your same old, same old, break that because it's dead. You think it's alive, but it's dead. You've been, you've been, you've been going through the motions. Increase the level. Level up. God is wanting you to do that. Realize this. One of the things that is missing in a person's commitment to Jesus Christ is self-examination. When was the last time he did self-examination? When we do have communion, communion examine yourself. When, 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 when the messenger examine yourself, oh, you are somewhere. Your mind is somewhere else. Your heart is somewhere else. That's worse even. Examine yourself. True examination. It is a heart problem. You will never, never experience revival unless your heart is changed. Your mind keeps believing that you are not dead. But God says you are. Something was lost. When was the last time you came to church for that reason? For the word of God. I'm going to church because I want to hear the word of the Lord for me. I want to change because I want to experience God. Touch my life. I want to meet with God because I'm just so down in trouble. When was the last time you came to church for a genuine reason for God? Oh, because I want to go there because I'm a member of the praise and worship team. And, you know, I need, I, I need to play the keyboard, I need to play the guitar, I need to sing. There must be more than that. Your heart must be excited. Wow, well, me, God chose me to do praise and worship him, in spirit and in truth. What an honor and privilege. There's got to be a deep and true repentance in the heart. There must be a moment when you get your face before God. Begin to truly cry out. Pray. God. I need revival. I have fallen. Lord, revive me. I'm willing to change. Whatever it takes. This time. I want to be the man you. Now, with revival, there's a process. And there is a price to pay. The first thing is setting your heart right before the Lord. Because without that, you cannot truly experience revival. You will not be able to experience the presence of God. You will not be able to truly sing that song. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. And when you sing that, the words from the scripture is just filling you up. 
<laughs> just strengthening you. The Spirit of God bringing back that which you have studied, that which you have meditated on, that which God has shown you where you were when you're reading the Scripture. Ah, oh, I was that character before. Oh, that part where, oh, God saved me. I was that person before. Now I'm this person fully favored by God and all that. And, and just the Lord brings you back all those things. You know, the things of the world is bombarding you. Oh, I need to have this. I need to have that. Oh, I need meat. I need veggies. Oh, I need fruits. Oh, I, I need this one. Oh, I need to have money. I need to have all these things in the world bombarding us. But the Lord said, I have something special for you. Things that the world cannot give. I want to give you peace. I want to give you joy. I want to give you a great inheritance. Oh, Lord, I'm satisfied. Just give me a nice car and give me a nice house and, and give me um, like my matching boyfriend or girlfriend. Of course, it's, it's all right to ask. But what the Lord says, what the Lord wants for you, you, you ask that. You seek for that. And you see, and many a times we, we enforce our own selves and just a matter of time, God exposes us and Oh, God, I made a mistake. I should not have. You see that? It's true. And many lessons in life. However, the great thing is that God still loves you. If you ask him to be revived in that part of your life which was lost or is dead, God's saying, okay, let's deal with it. And God says, are you ready? Are you ready to be revived? Because he won't do it unless you're willing. He will not force himself in just like salvation. You have to make a decision. A spiritual decision. A deep decision in your life. And perhaps at your age, you may be thinking, I'm too old for that. But you have broken that fallow ground of yours and made your heart tender again. Oh, Lord God, I'm willing. God will change you. And you will be surprised. Age will not determine you. Your condition of the heart will. You will, you will experience the youth of Christ in you. Regardless of your age. You will dance in here. You'll be waving the flag. You'll be praising Jesus. You're awesome in this place, mighty God. It's Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And that's all you want to do. You don't care for it. Anybody's watching you and all that. You just love the Lord. And tears just come down your eyes and you say, God, thank you. You changed. And you realize that you are back again. Because that's the touch of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I'm revived. Thank you. That's true. And that's the energy source, the Holy Spirit's energy within you. You're alive once more. And that was the original plan of God for your life and mine. Alive in Him. I pray that not every day you ask for a Bible for the same thing. I pray that you will love Him even more and that you grow in Him. Deeply grounded in the Word of God. And that is your foundation. If that's the area where you are dead with the word of God, ask God to revive you in that area. Because that's the basic thing for a Christian, for a follower of Christ. It's not on the outward. It's on the inside. Be established in the word of God. Jesus was established in the word of God. Each time he speaks, he speaks the word of God. He never went to school. He never went to university. Bible schools and all that. But Jesus spoke the word of God because he was there even from the very beginning. And how we have mistreated Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is so grief. The Spirit is so quenched. That's why we do not understand and experience him in the way that he ought to be experienced. In that area, the life of Jesus is dead in your heart. Even if you say so, you can sing it, you can dance it. You can, you, you can do anything, everything, but life of Jesus is dead. You want the life of Jesus alive again? There's a sign. 
when you know that the life of Jesus or Jesus is alive in you. When you begin to love the things that he loved. When you, when you begin to hate the things that he hates. When you distance yourself from sin. When you come to the presence of God and glorify him with all of your mind, your heart, your soul. We need to be revived, church. Josiah was revived. What a man of God. He was godly, and yet he repented before God. Because when faced with the real truth of who God is, he repented before God. And did he not only say it in words, he was there because he saw that the temple of God was filled with graven image, with carvings, with Asher, uh, Asherah bowl, with all these things that are the traditions, the worldly things, religiosity and tradition in the church. He said he got the spirit of God. He repented before God and God heard him and changed his heart. He began to do things, remove all these things that are abomination before God. Let the temple be the temple of God. Let the house of God be the house of God and not the house of men. Let it be. That's what happened. Until another ruler came, disobeyed God again. But God is looking for a man like Josiah. There was a man in the 14, in the 15th century, 1481, 1499, I think that was the length of his life. He was a Catholic priest in the Dominican order. And I, I know I got his name right. And I've researched on him. And there was a revival that broke out. And a Catholic priest being glued to the word of God. And he said, enough is enough with your, the tradition of the church. Enough is enough with these worldly things that's happening in the church. It's enough is enough with the corruption that's happening inside the church of God. He was so mad. And uh, in he... Uh, got the attention of the Pope to the point that the Pope excommunicated him and ordered him to be hanged in 1499. Together with his two friends, they were hanged and burned. But he exposed the sins of the church. But he was willing to die. And the Pope said, be ready because there are only two churches the church militant and the church triumphant. And you will be in the church militant. And he said, no, no, no. I'll be. I belong to the church triumphant. And he breathed his last about you and me. This is the church. This is the real thing. And many of those who followed Jesus, they were not afraid. I know then that there were angels all around them. And they're giving them strength and courage to face their end because they stood up to the end for Jesus. How about us? Yeah, praise God for his life. There is a process that's going on. It's all right. Maybe you're feeling like you are the David at 13 years old. He was called to be a king, but he was not sitting on the throne yet. But God said, you will be my king. In the meantime, there is a process that's going on. And every problem there is in his life from here, when God said you will be a king, to the time that he became a king. There's so many problems. And yet, David was always seeking the Lord. He does not always get it right. But he goes to the Lord and inquire and seek him. How about us? Just let it go. And that is why our hearts become callous. Our hearts just go the things that we know until it's too late for us to realize that. Or when we realize it, we don't do anything about it. Anyway, this is my life. Now, according to you, but to God, he's got a plan and a purpose for your life. Don't waste it. And so he became a great king. And then here comes this Joseph. You see that in, in the book of Genesis, from Genesis 37 to 50, about his life. And a, a, this boy... Maybe like pastor was prophesying to our little ones and all that. 
God prophesied to this little lad, the young lad, and he said, you, you're going to be a ruler. When God pronounced that, all the hell broke loose. Many things did happen. But the Joseph received the word of God, and wherever he went, he always glorifies God, whether he was in prison, whether in the house of the master, wherever, whether he's beside the king, as a cupbearer, no, he did everything else. Time came, 30 years hence, he became the prime minister of Egypt. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Don't waste it. If there's something that's gone dead, ask God to revive it now. It's specially cut out and made for you. God will make sure that if you start from the heart, when something great happens, a revival. You, 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 you know, you cannot experience awakening if there is no revival in the heart. It starts here. You come face to face with God. Because what was lost was the, 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 the greatest thing that was lost is your relationship with God. Not according to you, according to Him. The kind of relationship that He wants for you and me with Him. We have to discover that. And you have to get out of your own self to discover that because it's a spiritual gift. I give you eternal life. Discover what that eternal life is. You will never be the same again. It will not be the you, you. But you will be greater. And in this world, is full of chaos. God said to those whose hearts are attuned to me, they will do great exploits. And praise God for that. And so this is a time of revival. It's time to be part of the remnant church and not the, the, the seeker-friendly church. It's time to be church triumphant and in the church militant. It's time to be in the church alive, that is alive, not in the dead church. It's time for us to be in the real church, not the imitation church. It's time to be in the kingdom of God, that the church of God and the worldly church. Make a decision. Make a decision. In Ephesians 5.4 it says. Awake. Awake. It's time now to awake. And to be awakened. You need to be revived in the heart. Open your heart. Confess before the Lord. Repent of the thing that was dead. Because of your own doing. And let God revive you. Let that which was lost. Be found again. And you be that person God has called you to be. These are exciting times. There are times of revival. God is starting a new thing. And we must be in that. But you cannot operate in that if you are in your old, old you. God is starting a new thing. It's a new thing. It's a new thing in the age. Now this is not the, 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 the ultimate thing. But this is assuring the coming of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, where everyone will say and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord in heaven, on earth, and underneath the earth. And Jesus' name will resound. Jesus' name will be magnified. Jesus' name will be glorified. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the beginning and the end, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the Captain of the Lord of Hosts, Jesus Christ, the Savior and Lord of all. And so, get ready for revival. This is time for us to just sit down. We got, to give, we got to be noisy for Jesus. Leave his name higher and higher in Jesus' name. God bless you. Give thanks with a grateful Jesus